record for the folks who didn't make it. And this is going to be a little different because this is going to be a process. I had original intent of dropping a law day and explaining it and doing a webinar. And I was just like, okay, that's incredibly too time consuming on the end users end. That would be you, the people who are consuming the content. Because it's like every day a chore or something. So I decided to change it up a lot. Totally change it up a lot. But it's still it's actually going to be better. What I'm going to talk about tonight is why I'm doing this. And it's going to be a little different than the normal content that I put out. The reason I'm doing this is I realized my own mortality. There was a point in my life when I was literally ass out. When someone says, hey, I'm struggling, I don't have the necessary things in my life. Forget once, just totally forget once. Let's just talk about the core things, food, proper shelter, clothing, health insurance. We're talking about core needs. And I didn't have any of that. Any of that was totally ass out. I know what it's like to go to bed hungry. I know what that feels like. And I, like many people today, was not privy to secrets. It was a lack of proper education and information. Because the reason I came up to 50 Laws of Hustling is it's a blueprint of the things that I did to go from being completely and utterly ass out to running a seven-figure business. And it's simple on one level and extremely complex on another. And the big thing is the internal shift. At some point in your life, you will have to power up, power on. You will have to have a mindset of, I'm not going to do my best. I am going to do what is necessary. Totally, totally different mindset. When I was in the military and I was going through my MOS, uh, AIT, advanced and something training, I don't remember the acronym, but we had a test. We had several tests that were called crucials. And they were called crucials because if you didn't pass, you flunked out the course. There was no, you get a C, no, it's either you passed it or you didn't pass it. So, I had to go back to that mindset because I was just goofing off. I don't know what was wrong with me. I saw many of my classmates go down the hill and I came very close to screwing up a test. It was like borderline because I thought I put down the right answers and then I realized that that wasn't the right information. It was about agar. It was some other stuff. And I had almost handed it in. And I went back and I looked up and I still had like seven minutes. So I took it back and I went over it again and I found like all kinds of mistakes. And oh my God, if I had left it the way that it was, I would have went down the hill and became a 91 alpha. And it was just purely me goofing off. And I was just like, okay, you can't do this anymore because I had developed a habit, and I will tell you why. If you didn't know, I was a nerd in high school. I wasn't a popular guy. I went through basic training and became an Adonis. I didn't know it until I got to Fort Sam Houston. I used to do basic training with everyone else, and in the evenings, if you wanted to work out in the weight room, you would. So I would go in there five, six days. You know, and I was still was young. I was 18. So there was all this growth hormone in my body because when I joined the military, I was five nine. When I left, I was six one. So I had a huge growth spurt and I was working out. And I got to the IT and I was just like, I thought I was in good shape, but I was really built. So I got a lot of attention and it kind of went to my head and I kind of slacked off because 
I had never had that kind of response from women in my life. It, it, it was not in the cards. So I'm telling you this and I'm going all the way back because in my journey, there are points that when I go back, I realized that I was using the 50 laws of hustling. I didn't know what they were. And when you don't know what they were, or what they are or what you're dealing with, it's like having a grenade in your hand. If you know what you're doing with the grenade, it's safe. If you don't like, oh, let me pull the plunger. Oh, what's going to happen? Boom. That's kind of like what happens with the 50 laws of hustling. You have information. You, you have techniques, but you don't know what you're doing, so you don't know how to channel it and guide it, and it blows up in your face, and that will happen to me because I, you know, the first law of the first law of the 50 laws of hustling is opportunity is often covered in dirt. Basic training. We, we're getting yelled at. This is when the drill instructors could still put their hands on you. This was 1985, and they were like, doing stuff and in your face and using that smoky hat and putting that brim like straight up in your forehead. It was madness. And after doing that all day, I would go out and do more. And that's why I got better results, because even though I was working my ass off with everyone else, everyone there was working their ass off, because if you didn't, they got rid of you. I did more in the middle of chaos and it, I got extraordinary results. And I, I had to go back to that lesson because when I went to the boarding house, which was a step up from living in my car, I had to reflect on periods of my life when I was successful. And the thing is, no one told me how to connect the dots and how to keep things consistent. So it was very sporadic. So with recognizing my mortality and, you know, part of this is, you know, watching my dear friend, Francine, you know, in hospice in that last week of her life, she went from talking on Monday to Tuesday, barely talking, but still coherent to Wednesday, not being coherent to, you know, I would go every morning and make sure she had our morphine, make sure she was comfortable to from that Monday, she went from talking to the next Monday she passed. And it had an incredible impact on me, a huge impact on me. I started doing stuff that I never did before. Got rid of the big house. It's totally, totally different lifestyle because when you're confronted with the proper information, and that's one of the things with hustling, because I talk about it on YouTube, there's opportunistic hustlers and there's strategy hustlers. Most people are opportunistic hustlers. Hell, there's an opportunity, take advantage. They don't have a long term hustling strategy. So, Going back, looking at that, recognizing the mortality, and I was like, okay, how do I distill this information that helped make me successful? Because I say this not to overly impress you or to try to, some of the things that I was able to do literally blew my mind based on when I finally started to understand this stuff. And it took many, many years because it's a system. And that's another, that's one another loss of 50 laws. Everything's a system. Love, religion, church, your corporate environment, the military, the police, your municipal, everything is a system. Every system it has its own ecosystem, and in the ecosystem is a set of laws. Once you know what those laws are, you will be very successful in that system. And when, and for a lot of people, that's very hard to digest and to consume and not throw it up because it flies in the face of many of the conventional thoughts that they were given that, hey, this is what you do to be successful. Many of the things that you are taught to be good, fair, ethical, and honest will actually land you in hell, an emotional and a fiscal hell, because there's a lot of stuff that's going on. So with my examination, looking at my own mortality, you know, from my time in the hospital or my time when, you know, I went up a flight of stairs and I like literally passed out. And this was after I got out of the hospital because I was so weak because I passed out in the bathroom and, you know, woke up in the hospital. You know, you looking at these things and it made me define what I wanted to do. 
because this goes back to having the right information. Let's say you're a smart person. Let's say you are super intelligent. You have a lot of resources. But for some reason, you are just not. Hold on, because I'm recording this and I'm going to have to do this to uh, stop that. It will be. Because I switched, uh, you know, just a little personal information. I switched from one desktop, so a certain accident would not happen. So let's do that. Okay, we're back. All right, so the proper information. If you don't have the proper information, you don't have the proper strategy. You can have all the tools in the world. You can have a lot of money. You can have a lot of resources and you can still be very, very unsuccessful because knowing what the laws are, having the strategy is more important than the other stuff. This is how you have a guy who is hideous, who looks like Quasimoto, the hunchback of uh, Notre Dame with a blonde model. And then, you know, the first thing is, okay, this guy's got money. That's how he got her. But if you lift up the hood and realize this guy figured out a system, he's like, for me to get the type of woman I want, I need to make myself more successful. Now, many people marginalize his accomplishments because it's not easy to start a company and to get a lot of money. It's not easy. So, to go ahead and do the things he did was a huge accomplishment by itself. And with that accomplishment, sure, it drew certain type of women, but part of the system, because I've noticed something when I was in corporate America. I noticed that a lot of really successful guys had average looking to moderately attractive wives. It was just a reoccurring theme that I just saw everywhere from doctors when I was in the medical. I just kept seeing this over and over again. And it made me go, um, what is going on? What, what is happening with these people that have these results, but they don't really look like they should have those kind of results? And they figured out a system, maybe subconsciously, maybe overtly. But there's a system because I can tell you right now, real quick, if you want a certain kind of woman, make yourself extremely successful and not financially. Financially is only part of it. You can be an extremely brilliant writer and poor shit and pull bad women. You can be an artist. You can be a poet. You can be the best janitor. You, If you were someone that has defined himself and you are like the go-to, the authority in whatever you do, that creates power. And it also changes you. And a lot of people don't understand this because I sit back and I watch it and I look at these things and I look at the people using these laws and they don't know they're using these laws. And I look at people who are, I'll give you an amazing example of someone who I'm not a fan, but I can I can recognize talent and greatness, and that would be Sean Combs or P. Diddy or Puff, whatever he's calling himself these days. He figured out a lot of these laws and he used them with a great deal of expertise. A lot of the stuff that he did, because if you know there's something about him, other than a few issues early when he was younger. There's really not a lot of dirt on him. And some people would go and it's like, well, you know, he has six kids by these women and he's not married. Well, if you're worth half a billion dollars, I ask you this, which is cheaper, child support or alimony and breaking up of your wealth stack? I, you know, I used to sit there and was like, well, these guys get on, they don't get married. And I was just like, oh, oh. Because child support is nowhere near as long-term damaging as marriage. Paul, not Paul McCarthy, uh, Phil Collins. He got married, stayed married this one for five years. She got $20 million for five years. He didn't have the kind of money that Sean Combs does. 
So, you know, when you start like examining what these people do, and this is another example of a person that created his own economy, something I talked about on YouTube for years. And he's created his own world where he can do whatever the hell he wants to. Another person, Tyler Perry, he created his own economy. He created his own world. He can do whatever the hell he wants to. George Lucas, Bill Gates. There's there's a theme. There is a theme that I study. It's so elegantly simple but hard to grasp because the amount of work involved. Just because something takes a lot of hard work doesn't mean it's difficult. It's just strategy and it's, it takes long-term effort. But the deal is if you are looking to really use these laws, they're available to you. But there's a cost. There's a huge cost, and it's a big price in some cases. You may not be willing to pay that price because the thing is, the laws don't care who you are, don't care if you're black, don't care if you're white, don't care if you're Asian, don't care if you're Spanish. None of that stuff applies. Doesn't matter. Doesn't care if you're a woman. Doesn't care if you're old. The laws do not care, and that's the beauty of it. You don't have to be part of a certain group to use this stuff. And if you look out through history, and I will give you a name that you may or may not know, Franz Fallon. This is a brother, a French brother from a long, long time ago, who is credited for being the father of modern terrorism. Yes, a lot of people don't know that because uh, one of his books, The Wretched Earth, if you really look at it, this guy promotes violence for change. He promotes violence for change. I mean, it's just it's really, really deep. But think about this. Here's someone who is black, who's credited with a revolutionary war terroristic tactic that is used by several groups of people around the world. He did that. Now, if, you know, being black meant you couldn't have those things then he never would have been credited. See, that's the thing. He did not care that he was black. He went to school. He wrote his papers. He was a psychologist. He did these things. And he got results in a time period when people were getting shot in the street or lynched in the country. And, you know, he was in Europe. And he, you know, but the whole point is he used the law. See, it doesn't matter if you know what the laws are. It doesn't matter. So, Understand, the big reason that I'm doing this is I want people to be successful. And I have a saying, I don't think I can save everyone. I'm not everyone's brother. I'm not, I'm not my brother's keeper. Because the thing is, you can't save everybody. You can't. But if I can help a few people go from not working a job that they hate, go from being able to spend more time with their family or to build their own personal empire. If I can help a few people do that, it's an awesome life because I look at where I started. And I will tell you the first time I used the 50 laws of hustling, one of the laws, I had no clue to what I was doing, but I had purpose. If you don't know, when I got laid off for the third freaking time in 18 months, Something in me snapped. It totally snapped. And I did what was necessary. It wasn't ethical. I have no problems even saying that. I created a false reference. I went and got a, you can't even do this today. I went and got one of those digital voice boxes. What it is to say, it's, a, it's like remote call forwarding. It's what you can get with uh Google Voice for free now. It was 35 bucks a month. And whenever someone called that voicemail box, I got a text to my pager. Yes, pager. So I create that reference and I, I sat down and I created these resumes and I didn't even have anyone go over them. I went over these things like 10 times a piece, put them on monster.com. And I got a job, one job that I was working two full time jobs. You know, I got laid off from one. One was totally shit. Um, 
This one job replaced those jobs and doubled my income. I did what was necessary. And, you know, I will give you the thought process of what I did. It's like, okay, I am here in this boarding house. I am in this room with no heat, no air. I want out. I will not kill anyone. I'm not going to sell drugs. I'm not going to do anything highly illegal. Will I do something unethical? Yes. I, I, I had that conversation to myself just as I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself in that room. This is what I'm going to do. And I sat down. I talked it out. I wrote goals and I forecast it and I acted on the plan. And then six weeks later, I went from the boarding house to living in this lovely house in Jefferson Park, which is in East Point, Georgia. I had this great job and it exposed me to a completely new world that I didn't even know about because I did what was necessary. Because I looked at myself differently. I took no excuses. I said something and I didn't realize how powerful it was until I started doing the Hustler Mindset series and I started remembering my past. When I was sitting in that chair and the guy was laying me off and he said, I can get you two more weeks. And I said, no, I will figure it out. And I didn't just say it with my head down. No. My shoulders were up. My head was up. My determination was up. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing the right thing because I didn't go, oh, what was me? I said, I will figure it out. I said it just like that. It wasn't mean. It wasn't loud, but it was very determined. And that night I went home and crafted a plan that literally changed my life. That, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in the 50 Laws of Hustling. It's a very powerful technique. I've used it several times and for my YouTube business. I've used it for personal romance. I've used it for a lot of stuff. And once again, doing this course has helped me realize you can use this stuff for anything. But I was very myopic. I was like, well, you know, I like making money. I I used it for the storage auction business. I used it several times. And that was one of the reasons that I was able to grow and build a business where other people who had been in business 10 years prior to me even entering wasn't there. They never thought about growing. They never thought about growing. They never thought about expanding. You see it on YouTube. These guys want attention more so than they want fiscal escalation. Because the, just to be you know point blank honest with you, There's a lot of stuff I know how to do. I could put it on YouTube and become everyone's buddy, everyone's friend, and make a lot of people a lot of money. And they'll just say, hey, thank you, Glendon. I appreciate you. You're a good person. I wish there were more people like you. Why don't I do that? Because it's not my agenda. My agenda is to do for me and my family. That is my agenda. That is one of the things that motivates me because I've learned something in that boarding house. No matter what you do, no matter how you do it, there will be some people that will like you and there will be some people that will hate you. Regardless of what you do, how you drop it, it doesn't matter. If I was giving out great content, I would give you a great example. There's a guy. He's a go getter. Uh, He's on YouTube. His name is Thrift Quest positive guy. He's got this thing called a beast mode. He's doing this thing. He's putting out information. He's helping people. He pulled back a little bit and understand he's not like me. He was truly helping people from the goodness of his heart, just putting stuff out there, you know, being a part of the community. And he kind of pulled back a little bit. He didn't stop doing the videos. He just left some information out and people started disliking his videos. I want you to think about how powerful that is. Here's a guy who's trying to help people from the goodness of his heart. He doesn't want a dime. He doesn't want a penny. And the minute he does something to protect himself, he's hated upon. This is why. And it's very, very, you got to be careful with this. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So if you start giving people a certain thing for free, then later on say, hey, look, we want to charge you. It doesn't work out well. Or if you're giving people stuff for free, then you flip and change up the game 
and they're not getting what they're used to, they may revolt on you. Currently on YouTube, YouTube changed the comment center. People are revolting. People are talking about it's the end of YouTube. That's one of the most preposterous things I've ever heard. It's not the end of YouTube. It's the beginning of a new era. Facebook, if you go back a few years, did the same thing. And people are like, oh, Facebook is gone. Facebook, one of the biggest IPOs in history ever. So understand, another part of the 50 Laws of Hustling is you have to look at the world the way that it is, not the way that you want it to be. You have to look at it the way it is. You have to look at people the way that they are, even if they're ugly. And I'm not talking about physical attributes. I'm talking about their characteristics, how they live their lives, how they speak to people. That's what I'm talking about. So when we really jump into this, we get down to the nitty gritty. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be raw. I'm going to share some stuff with you I've never shared with anyone else. Um, for the guys, a certain dating technique that is extremely successful. My success rate was like 90%. That's a win. And, you know, and once again, it's not 100% effective. This stuff is not 100% effective. It's just highly effective. And I will give you the breakdown. When you first start, you're going to have to clear out some cobwebs. You're going to have to clear out some beliefs. You will have to make some adjustments mentally. Because if in the beginning, if you get a 25% improvement, that is marvelous. Because it's going to take you time of readjusting mental methodologies, regurgitating some things that you have believed for years. I give you one for free. If you do good things to people, they'll do good things for you. Not necessarily true. It's not true. It's not true. We live in a world where there are people who understand some of these laws or they live their life in a certain way and they know that they, they can get away with stuff and not have to deal with serious consequences. It used to be if you had to bully someone, you had to go find them, put your hands on them, extend energy to intimidate them and be in close proximity to them. Now you can send some tweets. Now you can go on Facebook and post some pictures and do Photoshop and make caricatures of people and bully folks. You don't even have to know someone to be a bully to them now. The world has totally changed, totally, totally changed. So understand that if you want to be successful, you have to first make sure your mental environment is functioning at 100%. That is the biggest thing, gift that you can give yourself and your family. Biggest gift, because once you make your mind lean, clean, and uncluttered, genius will ooze to the top. You will be able to think of things to make money, because another part that I'm going to really emphasize going forward is becoming a creator. Create a product, build something, make something, Become a producer of something because I want you to think about it. And I'm not going to talk about drugs and these other things because I don't know about drugs. I never sold drugs. And I've heard many parallels that, you know, drug dealers will make great business people. My big problem with that is no one's addicted to McDonald's. You know, when your product has a client base that's addicted and they have to have it to the point of selling their body to 50 men in one night to get some crack, that's not exactly hard to push because your client base has to have it. So what I'm going to talk about are companies like Home Depot. You know, if you know the story, Arthur Blank, Bernie Marcus, they worked for Handy Dandy. They took this concept to the higher ups and the higher ups was like, nah, we don't want it. And they started their own thing. Producer. 1950s, Detroit was the world's second largest economy, not state of Michigan, Detroit. The city of Detroit was the world's second largest economy because they produced things. We're going to be into a huge and bright and wonderful future right now. You will be able to come up with an idea. I don't care if it's a purse. I don't care if it's a pair of shoes. With 3D printing, with this, the ability, there will be companies out there that will be completely set up where you come up with an idea 
and they'll make it for you. And the smarter companies are going to enter into a partnership because that's going to keep things cleaner and easier. Because if you just give them your ideal, give them your blueprint, sign confidentiality agreements, you're still going to get ripped off. Whereas at least you go into partnership, you're going to have more transparency, in my opinion. So this is this is what's coming. A lot of this stuff is already here. And I'm shifting the training towards, you know, owning stuff, producing stuff, making stuff, because I can share with you my journey from buying stuff and reselling stuff. I did that for a long time. When I wrote the first book, it opened up the power of creating something. Because in the storage auction business, we did create things, but on a much smaller level. We would get furniture that was busted, missing drawers. And I, I saw there was this one buffet, dining room buffet, and the only drawer was missing was the center drawer. And the thing was beautiful. And it was just like, oh, God. That's you know, if you go to a carpenter and try to have a drawer made, it could be two, three, four, five hundred bucks to have a little drawer made that fits perfectly and looks appropriate. And I was sitting there in the warehouse. I was sitting on the couch and I was messing around, and then I needed to test a television. I put the television on the buffet, and I sat on the couch and I said, "Hey, this is cool." Man, if you could just, if there was some glass where that drawer was, you know, you can use this as a TV stand. And I slapped myself. I went out, it took a few tries, and I ended up, you know, I used plexiglass first. And I created this glass front on hinges where you could put in your cable box or your dish TV thing. And I sold that sucker as a unique television stand for $500. If I tried to sell it as a buffet with a missing drawer, I might have gotten 50. Repurposing, reframing, that is all part of the 50 laws of hustling. You have to look at the world in a different way to yield different results. And like I said, if you, you know, people are kind of coming in now. If you weren't here at the beginning, I'm just letting you know that the way that I'm going to drop the 50 laws of hustling is going to be totally different from the original plan. This is more of an introductory video to let you know why I'm doing it what's going to happen and how I'm going to drop it because the first way that I was going to do it was too onerous and it required too much of a commitment. Cause one of the things that I learned from teaching people stuff here online is I have to make this stuff simple. I have to deliver it seamlessly as possible and make it easier for you to consume. That's why I do video and audio because it's an easier way for you to get the information so you can be more successful. And the 50 laws of hustling is going to be a trip. It's going to be a trip. And for some of you who are like going into disruptive life coaching, I sent you an email. I like you to go ahead and just sign into that platform because I didn't think people were going to that spot. And other folks are like signing into the, dis <laughs> the disruptive life coaching. And uh, I removed eight today. And I know they're going to be surprised when they try to log in. I was like, it was, it was bananas, but please do that. Please go in there and sign up. But that's kind of it for now. There will be more this week. Um, the first section is going to be kind of crazy, but I will drop it and then we'll move on. So at this point where, you know, I've been speaking for a while. If anyone has any questions, go ahead. And if, you know, if a question pops up in your mind after this is over or as I'm shutting it down, this is what you do because you should be in the Facebook group, just post a question on the wall and I'll respond to it because I've done a really good job of cleaning up my email box, got rid of a lot of emails. So it's just a lot easier to stay in contact with people. So at the moment, if you've got a question, there's a little box under your name, just type in your question and I will answer it. And if there's no questions, I will shut it down. And for those of you, um, who haven't gotten this stuff or you know came late it's going to be recorded and it's going to be put into hustler university and since this is more explanation i'm just talking about stuff it'll probably be on youtube also but i probably will not put any questions on there that would be in sparta i can easily make two videos so if you've got any questions anything 
anything, even if it's not related to this, just go ahead and shoot. And I will give you a few seconds. Okay, no questions. All right, so I just want to say thanks for everyone that's coming out. There will be some more information uh, just to give you some advance warning of what's coming. Uh, some of these webinars are going to be in the middle of the day because, you know, I've done a lot over the years at night. I try to do them 9 p.m. so I can get the East Coast people, the West Coast people. And I've attended quite a few webinars between 2 and 3 p.m. and there were a lot of people there. So that's something I'm going to do just to let you know that's coming. All right. Well, this is Glendon Cameron. Thanks for coming out. There will be a lot more this week and I will see you on the good side.